And so I was really lucky to find a coach who was using this model to slowly make steps so that I was living a life that I really loved. And to me, like creating, 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 I'll say it a million times, like creating our life is like our biggest project. And so the coaching skills have helped me create my life with ease and with beauty and infused with like these beautiful people that I get to know. Um, so I think it's like the big picture of like creating my life and it's given me the skills to do that and then help other people do it too. Hey everyone. I am here with ACE coach, Emma Simpson. She's also a musician and now an author. So a uh, recent coach training program graduate, I'm so glad that we're getting to chat today. How are you doing, Emma? I'm so happy to see you, and I'm so excited to chat, too. Thank you. Oh, so glad for this conversation. So I love to start these interviews with, what are you celebrating? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm celebrating graduating from ACE, which is very top of mind and exciting. And I'm also celebrating the launch of a book that I wrote. Yeah, what's the what's the name of your book? And tell me just bottom line, what's the story of that? This is a lullaby that I wrote in 2016, and before I moved to New York, all my friends got together and we recorded the song, um, and now I've turned it into a children's book to accompany the song, um, so you get to visit this little mousy family as they do their nighttime routine and get ready for bed, but the baby won't go to sleep, um, and it's their adventure of, of calming down and getting ready to go to bed together. Amazing. Well, congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. You you uh, just published this book and uh, just completed your uh, program with ACE, which is a very rigorous program about to go for your ICF credentials. Um, so I want to actually jump right into the question of what's it like being a, a creative artist uh, who's very active creatively and uh, a coach at the same time? Because you and I have had uh, similar journeys where, you know, I was a full-time musician when I started training as a coach. And um, yeah, how has how those two things coincided and even supported each other at times? I'd love to hear about it. This is so brilliant because it's making me think of our first mentor sessions when I was like, can I even be a creative person and a coach at the same time? Like, what does this look like? that I struggled so much with my identity as a musician and as a creative person and being a coach, like your support in those calls to help me see that I can do both and that it's part of my vision as a human on this planet to do those things was incredible. And so because of my personal experience through that, I'm able to sit with clients in the calls and know it on such a deep level and just like smile and be with them in it. And even I have a coach now and I still come up with like, can I do it? Is it worth it? All these monkey mind symptoms. And to hear myself in a call and hear the voice of my clients saying really similar things to notice how normal it is to be worried about whether you can do your art or not, or whether you should do it or not. Um, and then shifting the attention to what's in your heart to do, what would you love to do, really changes the conversation. So that's something I always go back to is like, what would I love to do? Amazing. And wait and hear what I have to say about that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. And tell me just a little bit more about even what your day or week looks like for people think, saying, yeah, but how do you do it? Because you're coaching and then you're doing music and that, how do you... <laughs> What have you, what, what type of rhythm have you found or structure that's been really supportive that, that allows you to be doing uh, so much of what you love? I love that. Um, so I also am a music teacher. So I do have teaching mornings. So I'll teach from like 10 to noon and then I'll do my coaching in the afternoon. Um, and then on the weekends, I'll have some people come over to play music or we'll work on things together. Like luckily the illustrator that I work with is in my building. So I just went downstairs the other night and we worked from like 7 PM to 10 and like watched a basketball game and we're like working on our computers to finish <laughs> this book um so I think the fun thing is like discovering pockets of time of like 
oh, I have a couple hours. Like, what would I love to do in this time? Like, is that writing a 15 minute song? Is that enrolling people and making like a reel for Instagram? And I think the biggest element is like playing toward it instead of like, I have to do this right now. And if I don't do this, I'm never going to go forward, which is familiar. And I definitely have operated from that place. Um, but now I'm not. And so it's more of a like choice, like, what can we do here? And how could we play? And uh, how could we adventure? And what could we create that's beautiful? And asking those questions to discover what to do next in the day. I love it. I love that word play. And uh, you're just kind of embodying that word play. And it reminds me of um, when we talk about goals at ACE, you know, an ob object or area toward which play is directed in order to score, you know, and we talk about the playing field. So you're really just embodying the spirit of play. So uh, it's great to see. It's so fun. It's so, so fun. And I love that. Yeah. Like, what are you playing toward? And what do you need to do to get that ball down the line or, or toward your goal? Yeah. It's a really powerful awesome. thing. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about uh, who you work with as a coach right now. Who's your audience? Who's who's your ideal client? Mm. The folks that I work with right now, so excitingly, are all musicians. And they're thinking about writing records and crowdfunding or doing alternative funding to launch their projects. Um, and so, yeah, that's who they are. And they're beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what's what's like a, a breakthrough that one of your, because you've been working with these clients for a while now. Um, what's a breakthrough that one of your clients have had that's just uh, really been rewarding for, for them and for you as a coach? Yeah. I had one client who was for 10 years, like wanting to write an original album, they've played on, you know, they're a full-time musician. They've played with other people. They're a teacher. They do so many things, but they haven't written their own album. And so it was really important for them to do this, <clears throat> but they were really worried about whether they could afford to do it. Like the cost was holding them back from taking uh to making their record. And so we really successfully looked at like, is it true that you can't afford to do this? Are there other ways that you could invite people in to what you're doing so that you could fund this? Which I learned from you because we did crowdfunding together. <laughs> so it was really cool to employ those skills um, with another artist. And they successfully wrote their campaign, got maybe 50 or 100 people on the first two weeks to back their campaign and they raised can i say how much they raised or is yeah. that they raised ten thousand dollars amazing i was so proud of them one for raising that much money but for doing it in a way that was authentic to who they are and dismantling what they thought was true about themselves and about money that's so so cool. So the album hasn't come out yet, but there have been really great updates and pictures, and I'm really, really proud of them. I can tell. You just you're embodying the joy and excitement that coaches feel when when our clients are just doing what they really want to do in their heart. Oh my gosh, it's so, so, so the best. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I've, I've known you since the beginning of your coach journey, and now you've graduated, and I see you just having these great experiences with clients. I'm curious um, a little bit about the journey of finding your clients. What were some of the early challenges you had in finding the clients that you love to work with? And then um, what did you find worked for you that allowed you to start getting in consistently the clients that you really love to support? <clears throat> I think when I first started, it was like, I was in such a different place for myself. Like I was really a preschool teacher and a doula and transitioning myself into being a full-time creative person. So there were lots of conversations around like, do I support parents? Do I support teachers? And I did that for a little bit. Like I did a workshop at a, the Young Children's Conference in California. And then like I moved to New York the very next day. 
And then suddenly I was surrounded by more musicians than I've ever been with in my entire life. <laughs> and so truly like being here and being integrated into like the jazz scene um, has helped me find musicians who are like just graduated who are like, what do I do after this? Like, what is the next five years of my life look like now that I have this music degree? Um, so that's been really interesting. And I could not have seen that those are the people I was going to work with the when I started this program. Um, so it really took. I also was in the program for like three years and only had like 65 hours. And Maria was like, what? And I was like, yeah, you're right. And so then all of a sudden I was like, texting every single person I knew and calling them and emailing them and being like obsessive about sending things on Instagram and email. And then all of a sudden people were like, yeah, I'd love to chat with you. Like in the last two months, no, not even in March, I did 15 calls, 15, just, Hey, what's up? Here's what I do. How can I help you? And then that was like, I couldn't have thought to do that. I don't know. There was something that got unlocked in me feeling like this is what I do and I'm actually going to help and not not believing that about myself does that make sense I think that makes yeah. sense. yeah yeah well there's like a there was a shift you're describing I'm curious if we can explore that because you said uh, it's kind of like you made a choice to really be a coach because I, I you know I noticed that shift of having a handful of clients to all of a sudden showing up as, as I'm out there, I'm declaring myself as a coach. It's one thing to be in New York and being in all these uh, scenes. And there was something that needed to happen where you showed up as coach so that people were even aware that that's what you did. So yeah, there's, if there were any uh, shift in perspective that really helped you um, start showing up actively making making the calls making the text uh i imagine even in person you know in new york really just uh, letting people know what you do um yeah was there any any particular shift in in how you were seeing it that allowed you to do that i think the biggest shift was just in my language when i meet people for seven years it had been i'm an early childhood music teacher and the response people have to that is like oh that's so cute and like it's an for me it turned into a really easy thing to talk about and be like yep that's what i do da, 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 da. and then i realized like that that is what i do but i'm also a coach and like that's really powerful and probably more relevant to the people i'm talking to because they don't have children so just shifting hi i'm emma oh what do you do you know just shifting that conversation to me like i'm a coach and i help people fund their music projects and that's like it was just a shift in my language to be to remind myself like oh yeah i'm i'm doing that and even with the book that i'm working with i was with girlfriends last week and they didn't know I was working on it. And I don't know how, why I didn't tell them or how I forgot, but I think just like saying out loud the things that are going on was a practice for me. And I'm going to continue practicing that. I love it. <laughs> and uh, and you're getting results. I mean, I see that with coaches all the time. It's like we uh, imagine doing all these things and not getting results so much until we do them. And then it's like, oh. Here we go. <laughs> I'm a yeah. coach now. Yeah. And seeing the results and feeling like feeling the life that I wanted to live be around me is so, so like fulfilling and satisfying and really cool. Mm. So you just mentioned you, you help musicians fund their music projects. Is that, is that kind of the, the central, what is your, your central um, thing that you want for the clients that you work with. Yeah, I think that would be the central thing is like deconstructing what they think about being an artist and money because we have lots of things that we pick up on that we make true about ourselves. Um, and I don't have a term for this yet, but I believe in whatever the opposite of a starving artist is. I want to think of like a cute thing, a cute word that is like, like a living artist. I don't know maybe you have a what do you call it 
Well, that no, it's a great question. You know, it's it's funny. I used to do a program called Money Mastery for Starving Artists because uh, that idea, that identity, is so prevalent in artists. And of course, the idea was not not for them to stay in that, but to to meet people who were in that and and shift. Um, you know, I don't know, thriving artists, artists, <laughs> successful <Crisis>. artists. <laughs> what did you say? I just like artists. Like, I love that there was nothing after that. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, I think that's great. And um, I think there's something to being so specific. So many times people, coaches will really back off from being very specific in terms of what they support people with. But to support to fund your music project is so very specific. And then there's out of that, it's like have a shift in relationship with money and creativity and our whole structure of knowing around that, having a shift around that so that you can fund your music projects so that you can do your music projects. I mean, it's such a clear need and I think a lot of new coaches would say, oh, that's so specific. Now I'm now I'm ruling out a bunch of people. But you're demonstrating once you got clear on that, you're getting the people who are looking for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think to that, like being really specific is good and getting specific again is good and getting specific again. Like our brains, what I know from our program is like our brains love to try and predict the future, but they literally can't. And you can only do the very next thing. And so what is like the next thing? Is it this group of people? Try it out. Okay. Not your people. Try this group. Oh, we're a little closer. Like I had to do that over and over and over again. And because I did that, I'm like, I help artists fund their their projects like you just have to throw it out <laughs> i love it it's it's the uh, the spirit of experimentation and i think it's uh it is a creative process right i mean how has uh how has building a coaching practice been a creative endeavor for you mm. <laughs> I see it really as like creating the life that I love and that I aspire to because what really brought me to coaching in the first place was I woke up one morning and I was like, this is not my life. This is all wrong. And so I was really lucky to find a coach who was using this model to slowly make steps so that I was living a life that I really loved. And to me, like creating, creating creating i'll say it a million times like creating our life is like our biggest project and so the coaching skills have helped me create my life with ease and with beauty and infused with like these beautiful people that i get to know um so i think it's like the big picture of like creating my life and it's given me the skills to do that and then help other people do it too Perfect, perfect answer. Um, yeah, can you say a little bit more about how um, your coach training, right? Because you've been through this whole coach training and, of course, learn to coach others and learn how to find your clients and build your practice. But how has going through this whole coach training program affected or benefited your personal journey? Mm. Well, I think that one of the greatest things that I love about this program beyond all of the skills that I've developed are the other coaches that I've become friends with and get to like cheer on as they're doing their steps. Like Hillary just created this creativity workbook that's gorgeous. And I'm in a cohort with like Jesse and Amy still. And so seeing what they're up to and what they're doing and uh, sharing what we've learned to support each other um, is divine and wonderful. And I'm going to ask, can you ask that question again? Because I want to answer it better. Uh, 
Well, it's great. I mean, that that brings up another question that I'll ask after. Um, but yeah, how has going through this whole coach training program not only affected your coaching business, but affected your own personal journey? You know, what what lessons or um, tools have you used uh, that have benefited your your own life, your own personal journey? Mm. Well, the green lens has transformed every conversation I have with anyone. And that's one of my favorite skills to share with people um, is how to actually be like respectful and not just nice. I had a great call with Beth Ann once where I was like up against texting this engineer who would just keep blowing me off. And she's like, oh, you're being nice. <laughs> and what result are you getting from that? It's like, oh, they're still just walking all over me and I'm tired of that. <laughs> and so learning how to really advocate and say, like the thing that I want in a respectful yet firm way has definitely transformed my life. Um, and saying yes, like authentically saying yes to things and really saying yes to my dreams instead of what I'm afraid of. I, I think about that every day. Like, where are you placing your yes? Is it on your hopes and your dreams? Is it on your path or is it on your fears? Ooh, you're placing on your fears. Okay, what are we? What are we shifting to? And that, le like, learning what I'm looking at and where I need to shift to see what's even possible, and seeing what I'd love to do, I think, is the biggest thing that shifted for me. Very clear. I um, I love that you bring up the green lens because. I've done a number of these coach spotlight interviews at this point, and I keep doing them. And just about every interview, the green lens comes up. So it's really interesting. Um, so this is where sometimes I like to put people on the spot in the inter interview. How would you say to someone who's watching this, who's never done any ACE trainings, who hasn't learned the green lens, just bottom line, how you would describe what it is? What is the green lens? Hmm. It's a way to like reframe how we be in the world. And I was talking about this with a client recently. It's a way to stop your projections from going out. And it's a way to stop other people's projections from coming in. Like it's like a neutralizer of, of how to see people in like their truest heart way instead of all the things we think about them or all the things we think about ourselves that we're putting onto them. It's like, who are they? And just letting them be who they are. And then what's your experience when you see people through the green lens? Like ease and beauty and I want to say non-attachment. Like you don't get so swept up in what people are saying or what people are thinking. You're just like, wow, cool, you're thinking that. Doesn't mean anything about you, doesn't mean anything about me. I don't know, there's like a swiftness to it or like a, like a way to like embody and demonstrate like loving kindness and just a like, yeah, I think that's what it is. Perfect. <laughs> I'm excited that's to hear what other people said about that. I want to go back through all the interviews. Yeah, well, it, just, it keeps coming up. It's such a, and we've started doing more webinars again on the green lens. Um, so it just seems to be such a, um, a part of people's lives once they, they see it. So Thank you for letting me put you on the spot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was it like for you when you took the first ACE course? Now call it ACE Foundations One Mastering Your Life. What was it like for you when you first 
went through that four and a half days. It was so beautiful because at the time I was in an abusive relationship and I was like abandoned and I was all by myself and I was taking this course and every day being surrounded by people who love and care. And I saw just how much love and support was in a group and that that was even possible. And it made me see that like, I can't stay in this relationship. And so that alone is like priceless. And beyond that, the skills we were learning and the fun we had. And it was like the first Zoom chorus. And so people were coming back in from lunch and singing. And um, so to have like delight and fun in a really, really dark period of my life was like life giving and, and transforming for me to see what love really looked like. Um, I did find in the people and the, the process of, of that course. And then I think we also did standards of integrity. So like to see who I really am in all of that and then how to demonstrate those skills and see where I wasn't showing up the way I wanted to be was another transformative aspect of it. Demonstrating who you are. Woo! <laughs> I love <laughs> <More. it. laughs> yeah. hmm. Sounds great to hear about that, that initial formative experience um you got really excited a couple minutes ago about your buddies at ace the ace community so uh tell us a little bit about your experience of the community and how because i think it's important because um becoming a coach is often a solopreneur endeavor and um and yet i th i think bringing in community and support can make it not feel like you're doing it alone so just tell me a little bit about what your experience is of the ace community and um you were excited about it so what excites you about it and then how you've used that to support your journey Mm. Well, one of my besties from MLE is Natalie, and we would set the arena every day. I think we set the arena every day for three years. Um, and that was like, she would come over, we'd swim. We just became very, very close. And she was actually the first person to ask me for like vocal lessons. And then in those vocal lessons, I was like, I could see how coaching really goes along with singing. So I started practicing some of the coaching skills in a vocal lesson. And then I was like, oh my God, I am here to coach musicians. So without that relationship, I would not be the coach that I am. And so I'm so grateful for her friendship. Um, and she's she just performed with her band on a cruise. Like she is out there singing. I'm so, so proud of her. Um, so that's great. I could just talk about her forever. <laughs> um, then the other thing I really love, like you said, it is a solopreneur like thing. Um, and also in coaching, you can't coach your friends, but your friends, your coach friends can coach your friends. So that's a really, really sweet way to get clients and to be with trusted people who you're like, oh my God, you would love my coach friend. Like Oh, to match your friends up with your coach friends is very, very sweet. Um, and then to also hear about like how friends are using Substack. We've been talking about that recently um, with their podcasts and with their notes and with their chats. Like how can we use that awesome uh, application to create our uh, communities? Um, so being up to date with each other and like, oh, that's working. Oh, it's really normal that no one came to your event, even though they said they would like their monkey mind is coming up and be like, you're right. That is normal. Great. Okay. But what are we going to do next? Um, and so just like, because it's constantly evolving and changing, being able to bounce ideas off of people who are doing the same thing and who are just the most loving, inspiring people I've ever interacted with is a true, true gift. I love how you put that, Emma. Uh, yeah, it's just one of the things that uh, people considering joining ACE and the coach training program that I want them to see is that uh, we're a community that gets really excited about each other, you know, <laughs> really love supporting one another. Um, 
and uh, you really embody that. And I love how engaged you stay with, continue to stay with your coach buddies. We love them. And then new coach people come in and you do it, you know, a CIE with them and they're in a different part of their journey. So you get to see all aspects of it and support people at every step. I think like because ACE believes in a world where people are supported 100% to see that y'all are demonstrating that. And then for us to also demonstrate that, like as that is the standard here, creates a really loving and supportive community. So you're doing it. I love it. Well, I uh, have a few more questions. We could probably talk all day. Um, <laughs> it's just, just great seeing you at this point in your journey, having really um, built something for yourself and really, really thriving and, and seeing your creativity, uh, you know, publishing the book, doing your music, doing your teaching, all that stuff all at once. It's beautiful. I'm curious, what would you say to past Emma um, just considering about to start first course, about to start uh, considering the coach training program, what would you tell past Emma? If you could talk to her now. Mm. Mm. I like would tell her that we did it. Like we did it. <laughs> we learned so much. We grew so much and it's worth absolutely everything that you had to transmute and transform to be here now. So just like know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Perfect. I love it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> and like thinking of that is like, I have to celebrate or something. Like when I finally, when I finish this last test, there has to be like an acknowledgement and a celebration. I've done it in little ways, but I want like a, like a bow. <laughs> yeah. That's a party. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Wonderful. Mm, it's fun um, to be in the celebration phase of things. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, you know, it's something, it's such a key part of, um, you know, what we do with our clients too, you know, it's like, uh, and celebration, I tell people all the time, uh, and we start all of our enrollment masterminds that we do every month with what are you celebrating, start these interviews with it, because it's like celebration is not just a nice, fun thing to do for yourself, which it is, and that's a good enough reason to do it, but it's a, an important success skill set because you're pointing your brain at what's working because our brains are so good at going to what hasn't worked yet or what might not work and just reinforcing what's been working what is going well so you can do more of that um i love uh that you're continuing to practice that because right now is the perfect time to make sure you celebrate all all that you've accomplished so you can keep keep doing it yeah i love i love that thanks for the view of why we celebrate and why it's important what advice would you give to someone who might be watching this video who's just starting to consider or maybe have been considering for a while and is starting to take the first step considering a career as a professional coach what what little piece of advice might you give them invite your community in tell them you're doing it talk to your people about it because they are your like number one supporters and they're going to be with you through all of it and that is so really important to just tell your people what you're doing and what you're up to so that they can be with you in it so that they uh, can understand and be there when you're worried that it's not working out or what you're supposed to be doing and then is they're going to be with you when you get to celebrate what you're doing at the end like oh I think yeah invite your people in bottom line perfect well, I think that's an excellent uh, closing point here um, because you're really embodying bringing people in. And uh, bottom line, I hope I hope people see some opportunities to bring in support, bring in their community and uh, say yes to what's in their heart as you're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much for your time, Emma. This has been such a sweet uh, 
opportunity to reconnect and just celebrate all that you've been doing. And uh, I'm sure people who are watching this are getting a lot out of it for themselves. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm so grateful for the instrumental part you've played in me being here and the way you continue to do that for so many people. Oh, my gosh. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks.